All right, good afternoon. Uh, we're going to get started. Uh, my apologies uh, on your sheet. I have no idea why. I've tried to print it five times already, and certain images have not come out blank. So you will have to draw certain uh, images. I really don't understand what's happening. Um, FYI, this is last year's test. Literally. I took off the word test and I put orgo review on the top. This was last year's test. So, um, restart. We're doing it. So, uh, we're going to get going into it. Um, I'll give you an idea or let you uh, kind of write down certain ones that you need drawings of. So, for this first one, sorry, it's kind of small. Really can't zoom in. You'd like to draw that one out first. And then we'll kind of go over uh, the expectations of what we have. So, make that zigzag, please. Like it's on my sheet when I hit print, and then it, it just is gone. No idea. So it is strongly encouraged for you to uh, write on images. It is strongly encouraged uh, just for me. I, I, I feel good when I see little numbers, like one, two, three. You may not need to finish it all, but trying to find that chain, right? Trying to find those numbers. So it is really important to continually keep in mind that we are trying to find uh, the longest carbon chain that includes one, an extra bond, two, a functional group, okay? And then three, a way to name it with the branches that are connected to it, right? There might be two different directions that you can choose. You gotta pick the one that you can actually physically name. Okay, so how long is the chain you're finding if you're starting off? I found a seven. Either way, it does not matter if you go, oh, yeah, okay, it's a little wider than I was hoping. But if you go from below or above, that does not matter, the top or the bottom. Let's talk about numbering, though. This has to be my one, right? This is my two, three, and then, to be honest, though, these numbers don't really matter, except for the fact that I need my uh, chain. Okay? So, I'm going to give you 30 seconds to try it out. If you uh, are having an issue with the name, then we can talk about it. But uh, see if you can uh, get this name without me. Some I'll do right away. Some um, I think it's important for you to, to give it a shot if you have already done so. 15 more seconds or so. Two, three, dimethyl, two, heptene. That would be the name. Because I have a methyl on a Hunter Broad, if you're in the building, please report the to the attendance the office. Hunter Broad, if you're in the building, please report to the attendance office. Thank you. On the two and the three, and then my double bond is on the two as well, and then there is seven. So that would be that. All right. You can throw questions when you're not understanding. Is that on there? That was complicated. Okay, uh, that's on purpose. Uh, when you see uh, letters and things, you have to be careful. Uh, today in class, we talked about one with parentheses and two. You know, like there was uh, a CH2 and then there's a parenthesis with two. So, what did that do to my chain? You have to be smart about this. You can approach this a couple ways. You can redraw it and you can populate it. Uh, you could count out your H's and your C's and you can see the relationship. That N and then, right, the, the the double the n plus two, keep it or subtract two. Like what is what's happening there? So I'm gonna do it that way once. I've, I've never actually approached this problem like this before. I have one, two, three, four, five C's. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's a huge hint. Huge hint. And maybe you saw it, maybe you didn't. Now, another way to do it is that you might want to draw it. One, two, like just Get it going. One, two, three, four, five. And think about what you're seeing. It's really important that you're understanding what is going on. If you don't like that, maybe you just draw the C's like this. With that formula, what is that telling me? C5H8. What's that telling me? That's a triple bond. You gotta get it in the right spot. 
So where is that triple bond? Is it on one? Is it on two? Is it on three? Does it matter? You, know, you got to figure that out. So you got to look at saturation. That is clearly saturated right here. That that this next one is saturated with the two right there. Oops, sorry. Uh, there's another two on this one. So three, two, two, and then uh, this C has nothing, and this C only has one. So it looks like maybe right there. So you have two names you could give. Both are legit. If it were on the second, it has to be two pentine. You can't just be like pentine. So, it's kind of hidden, a little discreet. I can give it to you in formulas. Okay? I have a feeling this one's not drawn. Suggestion? The H's are not really the deal here, it's the C's. So, I'm going to give you a little help. If you want to start way in the bottom, I have one because this should have been printed. Two, three. Start with seven C's on the bottom, like right, put them right on the bottom. Do this with me. On the fourth C, let's go up, and we're going to do one, two, three, four off of that fourth C. So four going up. Okay, so I'm going to put seven here, so I have seven C's here. I'm going to go up four off of the fourth one so far. Then on that second one, you're going to put two on one side, one on the other. I just do C's, don't worry about H's. And then you can see there's two on the next one and then nothing and nothing. Okay? So I'll say that one more time. There's seven on the bottom. If you're seeing this at home, it's a lot easier. Seven on the bottom, off that fourth C, go up four more C's, put two off of the first one, one off of the other on that one, and then two off of that. Okay? This is what I like you to do. I'm going to pause it. What do we do? Find the longest chain, right? I box it. Problems like this, you box the chain. Don't put a line, don't get cute with that. Box it, make it nice and strong. Then start to, if you like to teardrop your uh, branches, that's fine, but start figuring it out. Suggestion, if you have multiple branches, I like to put the first letter of the name of that branch by that branch so I can keep track of my naming because I have to be in alphabetical order, okay? So uh, if you're doing this, go for it. I pause it when you're ready. First, it does not matter if you go to the left or the right on that bottom area because you're going to have the same branch coming off of that same carbon. Okay, so that, that's the first issue. The second issue is what are my branches and then what number do I have? So I, I'm not a huge fan of doing this, but I just want to really point out because whenever I do this problem, people always uh, lose that one right there. You know, that's the one that I'm always marking off. Everyone forgets it. So, suggestion. Sometimes it does help. This is an ethyl, that's an ethyl, this is a methyl, that's a propyl. It doesn't hurt to put the letters next to it. So then you can keep track of that. Because you're naming it. That's your whole goal. So you've got to be in alphabetical order. Uh, just know what you're doing there. Um, is the bottom or the top my one carbon? Top? Because if I do the top, this is one, two, three, correct? I do the bottom, I have one, two, three, oh shoot, four, right? That's, that's the, all the deal, I'm, I'm not counting the rest, so what are the rest of the numbers? If it's a tie, then I gotta go see what else there is. Yeah, today um, in class we had that one, it was like one, 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 fluoro, two, bromo, two, chloro. There were three on the one and only two on the two, so you had to make the one that could be three ones, the one, not the one that makes two twos. Uh, you couldn't have made one one and then two two two. You wanted to do one one one. So um, here we go. I'm gonna number it. I like to make sure that I'm doing this right. So that's as far as I would go. I do know that I have five, six, seven, eight, eight. Is that right? Anybody else? Eight. Just in case I'm not seeing it right. Says the person who has it pre-made for. Um, so what am I gonna write first? I have to do the ethyls. Ethyl always goes first. So I have a three four diethyl. Okay, then I'm going to go to methyl. 
four methyl. You run out of room, just put a hyphen and then start on the next line. I'm writing larger, so I don't have a lot of room. Five propyl, and then I jump right into it. Just double check. If you have C's with three H's on the ends and then two H's in the middle, unless if they're being bonded more often, you're fine. Uh, everything looks good to me. So um, this just goes in. Uh, Okay, if it's a letter to a letter, you don't need anything. You don't need a hyphen, you don't need a space. Uh, even if you aren't sure, you can always put it together. Like an ester or an ether, or sorry, an ether, or, well, just an ether usually has a space, but if you didn't, it wouldn't be a big deal. For alphabetical, did you look up the ether should be from a diethyl? Di is a prefix, that is not part of it. I would, yep, I would look at the ether. But that you would have gotten lucky with either way, but yep. And that's why, again, I write the letters on the sides. So it kind of helps me out. I keep track of that. Good. All right. Just a couple more this way, and then we go in the other direction. Okay, this, this one's not on there, is it? Okay, so I'm going to move this a little bit. <laughs> Take your time. What I would do, start with this right here. So count that up. I'll, I'll even tell you how it is in zigzag. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So make a seven zigzag there, and then that's pretty clear how to draw the rest. I don't want to give away the whole structure here. So make a seven zigzag right in the middle, and then follow along. This one's tricky. Take your time. I want you to figure it all out. If you're not sure completely, come up with certain things. Make notes on the side. We'll come up with it together. But what is the name of this whole thing? All right, so we're going to pause it. Chain. I usually see it incorrectly done. That is not the longest chain. And I'm not even counting this. I'm just going by eyesight right now. I'm not even... 100% sure on that without actually counting, but just the visual of that, that looks like that's the longest chain to me. I'm obviously going to count. If I do that, I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. If I do it across, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So there I am. Other ways to approach this, you could put little numbers. Okay, that's a one, two, and that's a one. Now, or you can put the letters again. Okay, that's a that's a one carbon, so this is going to be methyl. It's a two carbon, so this is going to be an ethyl. By highlighting your chain, you end up highlighting your branches. Now, we do have this little guy to talk about, but you can still cross that bridge at the end because that's just a function. So we'll, we'll talk about that at the end. So I still want to do all the other things. Where is my number one on the upper, in the top, or the bottom? Why does it have to be on the top? Functional group. I don't care if that functional group is a three or a four and um, the branch made it a two. Oh, the branch is lower. Doesn't matter. The functional group has to be the lowest. The bond has to be the lowest, then the functional group, then the branches. That's all you have to keep track of, those three things. So I'm going to start at the top. This is my one. Not a bad idea. I should I should see numbers. Oh, turn that over. The only reason why you go all the way to the end is if it helps you remember the chain length. But you need to at least get to the spots where the chain, the branches are. Now, if you don't want to do that, it's fine. I'm not grading on work. Unfortunately, this is somewhat all or nothing too. You got to be able to do it. So that's why we're, we're practicing with as many uh, examples as possible. So uh, I have a 6-ethyl, 3-methyl. Then regardless of what this is, you still can get to a certain point. Let's say I forget what this functional group is. It's on a 2. It's on a no name. So I can still say 2, no, no nan. Now if it's an alcohol, it would be known and all. Sound really, it's going to sound weird no matter what it's going to be. If it's an aldehyde, it's a known anol, which sounds exactly what I just said, but I didn't. It was an AL versus an OL. Uh, known anoic, known anoic acid, known and no weight, uh, all those kinds of any, known and mean. But this is a known an, which is even the weirdest one, known and known. Known and known. I have a tattoo that says. It is a ketone, but you could get all that other stuff right. 
I mean, if you're like just freezing or you haven't really worked on your functional groups, like you've, you've looked at them from time to time or really tried to process before you tried it, and to me, it's always about the, the mini struggle, the, the failure of trying to get it right and then seeing what it was supposed to be, then just, I'm not sure, then looking and then just getting the answer. You still had all this other stuff, all this other stuff to be right, right up to that. So, kind of keep that in mind, okay? But that's the answer. Six ethyl. Three methyl, two known and known. Do I have to have the two? In this problem, if you did not put the two, you would not lose the points. Why is that the case on this one? Because what did I say? Whenever a functional group or an extra bond is not placed or not a number, then we assume it's on the first carbon, right? So why do you not need a two on here, technically? Yeah, it's the first possible one. In this case, a ketone cannot be on the first carbon, right? So if you don't put a number, you're assuming two. To me, that's a dangerous game to play. I mean, I even do this. I, I write this one. Because it doesn't hurt. But you could get lucky. But just understand that technically that wouldn't have to be there. But if you put the two, that, that's just a safer bet. If it was on the three, you can't be playing games now. It's like, well, come on. I mean, you knew what I meant. No, I don't. So that was that. All right. Is this one drawn? <laughs> See, now why is that drawn? Like, nothing special about that one. Okay, hey, we get to do one together without anything. I, I again, I am sorry, because it, it is nice to already have it pre-made. So hopefully you made some good pictures. I know some of us who struggle with drawing in general. So um, all right, let's talk about this one. I'm going to do this one right with you right away, OK? This is my functional group, right? So this is part of the chain. So I got one, two, three, four. Now I just got to find it. I just have to find it. Five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six. OK, I found it. So my chain is right there. Right? I have a seven. All right. So what do I have is at the ending of my red uh, zigzag is right on my right side here is this a one carbon, or is that not starting at the chain yet? I mean, is that the actual chain? So I guess basically is what I'm asking. A or B is, is which one's carbon one? B. This is this is the the functional group. This is big, and I tried to get away because I drew a carbon there. But this is uh, anchored on a carbon. So this is carbon one, carbon two, three, four, five, six, and seven. Okay. What functional group is this? I'm trying to give you hints of how to figure this out. It's an amine or an amine because it has an end, so ammonia. It's an amine because of the O. Right? It jumps up with like the D. Okay? So if you see N, it's like ammonia. Oh, ammonia, amine and amine. So this is an amine. All that does is that's the ending. So if it was like prop, it'd be propanamide, uh, butanamide, octanamide. That's all it is. So we just name everything else normal. So what I'd like you to do, name this now. I'm giving you the, the framework of this. Amines and amides should not be all that tricky. One quick thing if for some reason there was a branch coming off of here, this is two, uh, this is one and two. You would name, this actually, you would, you'd say this first, like this would be ethyl, and then you'd start naming everything else. Because then it would just be like, well, why does it have a number? Ah, it doesn't have a number because it's not on a chain. It's coming off of my functional group. That's how like amines and, and esters work. If it's just coming off and you have a YL, then there's nothing. I'll show that when I actually write the real thing. Then, oh wait, it, it doesn't tell me a number at all. Because you can't have a one for a branch, because it would be part of the chain. So if there's no number, then it must be coming off of the function group. So give it a shot if you haven't already. Again, I know, I know every situation can be confusing, and we got to just keep working at it. You know more than you think. It's the little things that you don't that are probably just make you feel like you don't know anything.
That'd be the name. If for some reason, let's just do this again. I'll make this up, three of them. One, two, three. That was like that. Then it would be like that. And I did write, I do write it first because it's something different or I write it, if it doesn't have a number, I'm not gonna do that to you. Either I'm gonna have a bunch of branches or I'm not like, I wouldn't have all these other branches on here. I'm, I'm trying to isolate, if branches are on chains then I'm worried about your branches in your chain. If I'm doing a branch off of another functional group, then I'm probably just gonna give you a chain and a, and a branch and I'm testing you on the functional group without, I'm trying to limit the complexity. There's only so many things I want you to have to be concerned about with our naming. Why? Oh, I just erased them. No, because there's there are three coming off of that. So that'd be appropriate. What, what if it was SL? Would you just put like four two? SL? No. I mean four. It'd just be ethyl and then four F. It would just be it's completely just separate because it's it's apart from it. Okay. I would not do all of, if I did that. Th this these wouldn't be there. Like I'm, I would eliminate that. That's not what I'm trying. I'm not trying to throw everything at you at once. There's a lot of complexity in this. I guess have faith in the examples I'm giving you now. And this was the test last year, so you can kind of get an idea of, of the severity that I'm going at. Like there, there, I'm not hiding anything. I'm I'm ready for a new one. So that's why I'm showing you now. I, I eventually will throw away the test each time. So I have a feeling that one's not drawn. That was pretty easy to draw. Please draw it. Or is it? Okay. Let's go. So, talk with each other or work on it yourself. Figure out what the heck is going on here. Okay, this one uh, has some extra complexities to it. Maybe, maybe not, depending on your comfortable uh, level of certain uh, functional groups. So, see what you got. Go for it. What's a functional group? Finester. Esther wears glasses. There she is. Those are the glasses. Horrible picture. What? Where is my chain? On the left or the right? It is on the left. It's not a guess. You don't get a choice. This is housed on this carbon. So that a functional group is always bonded to the chain. Okay. So that means the branch comes off on the other side, not on the same side. So this is my chain in green, this is my branch in red. So we always name branches first, that's one, two, three, that's a propyl. Then I have a one, two, three, four, the propyl, butan, and then what does Esther eat? Oh, it's. That's it. Propyl butanoate. I'm not going to put extra, we could, but I'm not going to, extra branches and things. I think this is already, if you can answer that, you, you're there. You're there. That's not on there, though, is it? Okay, so please draw that. Seeing if you can roll with the tides. I didn't actually say roll tides, so settle down. So, I want to see if you are able to apply uh, the knowledge of having multiple bonds. Okay? So, carbon, number one, right or left? And again, the H's, to be honest, are not the big deal here. Why am I not concerned about the H's at all? The minute that the, the uh, uh, structure is given to you with extra bonds, they're not trying to trick you. It's not like they put an extra bond and then be like, oh, I didn't write another extra bond. Like up here, yeah, they didn't write, I didn't write all the extra bonds, but I didn't show any bonds on number two. So that is where you have to be careful. If you're starting to be shown bonds, it's not like, I mean, they're all, they're all drawn there for you. So this one has to be one. And the reason why is that if you go the other way, it would have, the, the extra bonds would be at a higher number, correct? Right, bonds take precedent, then functional groups, then branches. So we have to name that. So what numbers are those bonds on? 
two, three, and four, correct? That's what they are. So just like if it was one bond, if this was just one bond, let's just pretend for a second that the, the first bond is the only bond that's there, okay? This would be, I hope you'd agree, I'll write it here, two, um, I forgot how to do this for a second. Ooh! It'd be a two octane, right? That would be it. If it's just that bond, just that bond, right? So it's the same concept, though, just what do I have? I have three of those bonds. So when I have three of something, if you get, this is where students don't have a lot of confidence because we don't have, I can't give you enough examples for this, no matter what. If you had three methyls, you say trimethyl, right? If you had two ethyls, you say diethyl. Uh, I think that's what I just said. And when would you do that? Right before that branch. Right? You, you'd say the prefix right before that branch. So same idea here. I have a two, three, four. But I have to say that still with chains, it's really strict. You gotta start with the chain. So I have octa, and then I have three double bonds. So just what I'm trying to get across is just like a function or a branch where you would put a prefix right before the branch, you put a prefix right before the number of bonds. Okay? So you could have trienes, you could have dienes, that's two double bonds, you could have a triene. We had one of those, it was a 1 8 octatriene or octanona triene or something like that on, on Orgo 3. Easy for me to say. But that, that's the answer. Uh, I just want you to get familiar with that. Would be 2 3 4 tri octahene. Uh, you put the, the tri right before. If you miss a letter here or there, that's fine. As we've said in class, certain letters are more important than others. You're trying to write an ein and you put an e instead of a y. It's not like, oh, I misspelled it. No, you, you said double bond versus triple bond. That's, it's an important letter. All right, I don't think. So the last one we need to draw, I believe. Can you please put that in? So that's just, so if you can't see it, one, two, three, four, five, six, a six zigzag, and on the third one, put a OH going down. A six zigzag, and then OH going down. Okay, please, name that one. We have one more, I'm sorry. One more you have to draw, and then I think that's it. So these last two, and then I want to show you uh, expectations of what you need to be able to do with specific notation. When I ask you to do a certain notation, can you do it? This one shouldn't take more than a set. Like this, this is a short problem. That's it. If the OH was on the end, just so you understand, I'm just going to make this up. Let's say this wasn't here. And that said that, did I change the length of the chain? Don't, uh, doubt creeps in to people and they see this extra line and they're like, oh, there's another card. No, that, that OH is just on the end. This would just be hexanol, right? Or one hexanol. You could write hexanol though, because it's on the end or at the beginning, technically. Okay, last one to draw. Let's bring this up a little bit. And I'm sorry, I'll help you out. I know for you in the back it's harder, but one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. There's eight C's, just do C's, don't worry about the H's. Do that on the bottom, please. Eight C's between, and do lines. Between, um, you can see this, the last three C's, you need to do a triple right there, okay? Then away, going from the right, the fourth one, go up, and then that's one, two, three, four, five. That's, that there's five C's on the top. Okay. Please name it and check with someone else if you're able to. So the biggest deal for you is you need the longest carbon chain possible, but you've got to include that bond. Now, in some cases, getting the longest chain will include that bond. Sometimes there will be chains, though, that are shorter because you have to include that bond. So be it. You have to include the bond. We don't have the ability to do it any other way. So if you do it right, I believe that's my chain. I'm pretty confident in that. So where's my number one carbon? It's right there. So I have uh, nine carbons. I have something on the fourth carbon here. So I'm going to name that first. So see if you get this right. I have a four butyl. Two no nine. So 
Can we disarm this stuff into the simplest form we can? Chain branches. All right, let's flip the script. We're going to start drawing stuff. If I write lines, I mean zigzags. Okay, you cannot put C's. You cannot do that. The only things that show up are N's and, and O's, and an H every once in a while if it's right on the end. Uh, but you don't have to. So this says dipropyl ether. Um, there is no branch. There is no branch. Or sorry, start over. There is no chain. How do I know? It doesn't have an A and E in your eye. That's a huge clue. That means something has broken up the chain. So you got to try to remember what the heck an ether is. So we have amines and we have ethers that'll mess you up, but I think ethers aren't that hard to remember because you have ethers and esters. They both sound similar. Ester with glasses, so yeah, ester and glasses, so those are O's. So an ether must have an O. So it says dipropyl. So that's three. So literally this is what I have to draw. What I see students messing up on is this. They'll do this and go one, they'll go one, two, three, one, two, three. That is wrong. What is that? What's the name of that? Di Diethyl ether. What is the name? I just want to make sure you're understanding this. What is the name of that? Ethyl propyl ether, right? If you have the same name, you don't say it twice. So the, the one that we just said before, you wouldn't go propyl propyl ether. You just dye propyl ether. Okay, one last one. I'll just put it over there. It doesn't matter that it's on the left or the right. That's a butyl now, right? And this is a propyl. Butyl would come first. So now it's a butyl propyl ether. So ethers just have branches. That's it. And you just put an O in the middle. Okay. I think it looks cool. Sometimes I'm going to ask for all atoms. When I say all atoms, I'm going to have probably very small ones. That's everything. If you are missing an H, you will get docked. All atoms. C's, H's, halogens, uh, oxygens, nitrogens. Those are the ones that we care. That's it. That's all that orgo is. There's nothing else. So when I say all atoms, please follow those rules. Name this. All right. Draw it. Draw it. I'll pause it. Go for it. You want to get a head start on the last one on that side? That's also all atoms. So I got 1, 2, dichloro, 1, 1, 2, 2, tetrafluoroethane. Woo! Mouthful. And then the other one, 2 methyl butanol. Can you do that one? All atoms. Can you miss an H? You're done. The easiest way to do this, C's have four bonds. C's have four bonds. You can't do zigzags, because zigzags do not include atoms, right? That you assume. You do zigzags, you're in a lot of trouble. On the test, good question. Evelyn's like, I'm going to do a zigzag. If you are even doubting what you're supposed to do, just call me over. That, I'm going to tell you what I'm looking for. I'm not going to tell you anything about how you're supposed to do it, but I'll be like, no, you need C's. You can't do zigzag. If you ask me, is this how I do a zigzag, that's a bad question. So if, if I want to include an extra atom, do I do this? I, I, can't, I can't help you. You've you got to understand how to do the chain direction. We've made enough compounds now that you should know enough of what I'm going to ask to be able to do this. All right, I'm going to start filling these in. If you're not done with the first one, don't look up. If they're not exactly where you put them, it's not a huge deal, as long as they're on the, the same carbon. So that's number 11. As long as there are, I, I, oh, mine's going on the side and yours went down, it, it's fine. But that's all that one was. It's amazing how many people don't get that one right. And it hurts to see. This one's a little harder. I always start with the chain. Know how you're going to attack it. You shouldn't be like, oh, all. I'm going to put that on there right away. Like, put it on what? You can't put it on anything until you get to the chain. Um, to be honest, I do the uh, branch next, and I will get there. I'm going to fill everything in. So if you're like, how do you do this with just all atoms? I, first, I want to get my C's all done. Okay, so what is all? Aldehyde. Al. 
Maybe you can think of it, Al's on the edge. So what is Al? Al is a double bond. Now, if you're too close, sometimes people put it at an angle. I don't care. Put it straight up. This isn't, this isn't geometry, meaning that angles aren't necessary. Zigzag shows the angles. That's it. I have to fill everything else in. There are choices. You can do this. That's legit. You do need to do it in structured form. So I'm asking you to do it so you can't like consolidate that down there. Why? Because that would have an H there and an H there. That's okay to do. To be honest though, a lot of us probably don't think that way when we're thinking of our structures. So you might want to just have it now here. For example, this one, what I would probably do is an H here, and I'd write these a little smaller. But on the ends, I'm realizing what I need. I can go all three, or there you could still do the H3. And here, like a methyl, you could do H3. Like a lot of people that do, even when you're doing all these other branches, that's fine. But if you're going to do your methyl, and you want to do all of them like that, that's fine. And then you got to draw it all up. So writing it uh, bonded off the edge or connected like that, that's fine. I don't need to see every bond. That's assumed it's there. But I do need to see every atom if I say all atoms. This is about as big as it would go. I'm not asking for something crazy. That's about as big as I would have it be. Okay. So up to the back, we're almost done. That's, that was a lot of the work. OK. Oh. There will be, I'm not going to make you name it. But if it's in the name, I, and we're going to do one tomorrow, you should be able to do that. So let's talk about it. Assistant of Trance. The only thing I'm bringing from uh, that lab that was, uh, was new. I think of transversing. So I'm going across. So cis is on the same side. That is affecting the bond orientation. Okay? So, suggestion. It says all atoms. I'm not making you do zigzag here. So, I would draw the double bond first. I know that I'm not on that carbon. But, let me ask. Don't, don't copy me right now. That's what I'm basically going for in the beginning, the first four carbons. Is the first one or the second one the cis? And if you're like, oh my god, this isn't fair. You just brought this back up again. We'll, we'll do another one tomorrow. Just can you, can you figure that, it out? First or second one the cis? First. Why? Gotcha. You're transversing something. Look how far this is. This is all on the same side. Another way, it looks like a C. If you turn your head, it's a C. Trust me. We're having to look that hard. Uh -oh. <laughs> so, you had, now you could have gone below it. This is just as correct. Oh boy. We've done this as well. Okay, whatever. But let's talk about how I would make that go. So I need five. So there's my fifth card. Sorry, taking forever to get here on this. And then on the fourth carbon, I have a methyl. And then that's it. So I could do it like that. I could, I could fit an H inside of that one C on my fourth carbon. That's just one way of writing it. You could branch them all off. Some of you are going to have you're going to have little lines everywhere. Please, if you're going to do H's, make them smaller. Like you don't need to make, do it crazy, but I need to be able to read it. So please, no, you will be responsible for one problem. Not naming it. I'm not bringing that in because I think that's harder. Like when do I put it? Where do I put it? But if you see the name, remember that's just the orientation. Bless you. So a trans would look like. That. That would be the trans because that would be the orientation around my double bond. Okay? They're not on the same side. This is the trans, this is a cis. What did you say last time? I don't remember. Yeah, you do. Stickler, yeah. <laughs> Let's get it. 
Okay, next one, lines. So that's zigzag. And the reason why I don't write zigzag is I wrote that one here and never, like some people, like, is that the lines? I'm like, yes, that's the lines. And then they be, and then when I wrote lines, they're like, do I put the lines in the zigzag? I'm like, I can't win. So I don't know what to write. Ziggy, zaggy lines. I, all right, so here we go. Go for it. One, two, diethylcyclobutane. As always, we start with the chain and we go on from there. Some of you I know, you're ahead of me. Don't look up, I'm gonna start it already. So, I like this one a lot. It doesn't as long as the next one's next to it. Right, yeah, no. Well, it looks like a claw that can pick up things, which is cool. So you're saying that you drew yours lame like this? Yeah. You rose the ante on that. <laughs> but they can like carry like lift like ten times their strength or their weight. Idiot. All right, last one. Uh, drawing. We have not covered this yet. You will be guaranteed one ISO. All right, so lines again. Give it a shot. Go. This one's. We talked about this before. If I just have this and I do that, this isn't two carbons. That's, that's, that's one. So a branch comes off. A branch is not on the chain. It comes off of the chain. So if you're putting your fennel on the actual chain, you're not doing that right. You're gonna shorten the chain by one. What I'm saying is this is what a lot of people do. Let's say I want a four carbon chain. Just making that up for right now. And you put this on the end, like that. How long is that chain right now? That just became three. Oh no, no, there's one right here. No, it's, it's not. That's, that's, the, that's the bond that's connecting the chain to the functional group or to the, the branch. So if you put it directly on the chain, you shorten the chain. That's make, I, I will draw the right answer here, but most people make a mistake on this problem. So I'm gonna get it started. I'm gonna make my heptane first. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I'm gonna get crazy because I have room over here. I'm actually gonna call this one. So this is the right answer, by the way. You don't have to go this direction, so sorry if I'm confusing you. I have to branch that off, so now that's my one. What a lot of you are doing is this. And then you put it right there. Now I know you probably have it over here. I'm just mixing it up. That's now only six. That's six. This is seven. Does it matter if that line is like horizontal or does it have to be slanted? Huh? I don't know. I get it. Go one, two, three, five. Go with the flow, please. I'll say if you constantly are going against the flow and you do that eventually, I'm going to mark it off just out of principle because you're hurting my brain and my soul. Like you cannot. You have to go with the flow. Like that's just what we do. Um, oh, and then an isopropyl. Okay. In lines, this is what it would look like. So what it would look like. You cannot go straight up and then a line like that. That is wrong, 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 wrong. Ah, you gotta change direction, okay? That is a nice problem. What would an isobutyl look like if this is the chain here? It would be like this. So then you'd have one, two, three, four. Nice goes off of the second carbon. So there are three, there are three chain carbons here. So that is the four isopropyl two, three, five trimethyl Phenol heptane. Okay, we're going to kind of go through this fast. So we're going to do a little bit of it together and a little bit apart. I'm going to make you do an isomer problem. We have not done isomers for a little while. We will be doing one in class tomorrow. So check this out. Look how I have this written for you. I am giving you the idea, I'm not trying to trick you, but there's up to 12 and as little as one uh, number of isomers. I'm not going to say there are five. But if I just leave it wide open, it's really difficult. So I, I'm going to give you a structure. Maybe I draw it out. This one I did. Maybe I don't. Maybe I just give you a formula. 
So here it is, it's 2,3-dimethylpentane, which has a formula of this. So this is, that's the key thing, okay? Uh, not including the compound below, not including that, which is amazing when I write one, how many times people continually make the one I've already made. Uh, include the structure and the name. We're going to do something together because of time. Uh, so this is how we're going to do it. What do you do? You start with the longest curve possible. Let me ask before we go. Not even looking at the structure, which is already here, what do I know about that with bonds? Single, double, triples. They're all single. Life is easy then. If there's doubles or triples, that's a lot harder. So I can also see it in my example already. So what do I do first? Start with the longest chain possible at 7. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. And that is, you put the name underneath, heptane. I have one isomer so far. Okay, now what do I do? Shorten the chain. So I'm going to go to 6. Please follow the numbers. It drives me crazy when you go down this way and you see the numbers there. And this is when you walk out, everyone's like, what did you get? Oh, I got, I got 8. Oh, I got 10. Oh, I only got 6. No. And then everyone's freaking out. Um, so now I have 6. And what do I have? I have one extra carbon. So now I need to move that around. Where can I not put that? First or last, right? So be systematic. If you're like, I'll start in the middle. Maybe that's your personality, and that's fantastic. I love it. But you're really screwing yourself up. So this is a 2-methyl hexane. You are not being graded that is, oh my, is Mr. Gussie's number 2 a 2-methyl two hexane? Because what if I don't put it in the right one? That's not it. Although if yours is mine, I, I appreciate that. There are people that will follow the exact same way I did it, which makes it easier to grade. Uh, can I do any other ones with a uh, hexane? I can put it on this one. Right? So you got to name it. Do not get lazy. You do not like draw an arrow and write like three methyl and then an arrow to like the word hexane. No. I don't know why. I just I feel like you'd be like, no, I thought I did. But you'd make it all like you'd actually make it look like it'd, it'd be more work somehow. But you'd be all like, you know, it'd be in a good way. I'm trying to give you a, a weird compliment. But. Can I? Don't draw this yet. Can I do that one? I'm just moving across. I can't. The minute you can't, why? Because it's the same as this, right? The minute you can't, that means I shorten the chain. Why can't I? Because now this becomes one, two, three again, and that's the same as the one I just did. So know when you shorten it. So now that's shortened. I'm going to five. Be very careful now. I cannot repeat what that is. I have two carbons. So be systematic. I'm going to do that one. So what is that? That's 2,2-dimethylpentane. Two, Believe me, this test what it does fit. This one fit in the hour. Just, I slowed you down, probably. What else can I do that's not the example? Sure, a 2,4. Not the one I would have done next, but we'll do it. The reason why is my mind was going on these, so I would have stayed in that idea. That it's not wrong. My gosh, it's not wrong. But I have a two-four dimethyl pentane. Anything else I can do with a five carbon? What? One five? Don't you dare say one. What if you did one five? Let's just look at it. Which one is that one? That's that. Because it's one, two, three, four, five, six. So if I do that, then that's this. Right? Because then that's that, right? It's good to see the things that you can't do. But where can I put this? Can I do three, three? Uh, trust that I'm not going to have some crazy like 15 uh, isomers or something like that. Like that, that's not the point. Um, anything else I can do with that one? You can't do the two three anymore. You can't. I've already done two four. I've done three three. I've done two two. It looks like that's it. So, no. 
Because when I do 4-4, four, four, that's 2-2. Two, 2-3? Two. Two, ah, good question. You're right. Yeah. If I put it here, that's this one, right? But if I put it there, I have a one, two, three, four, five carbon, no matter what. But you were right. So this is a three, and that's the one that everyone misses. A three ethyl pentane. That's very rare to be able to do ethyls. Because you usually don't have enough carbon to have your chain long enough. You know? All right, now i got to shrink it. Just trust me on that. And there's only one left. And I know you're not supposed to know that, but I'm telling you now just due to time. We have three carbons we have to place, and what can't we do? Can't put it on the, the one in, the, in the, the, la the first and the last, right? If you do an ethyl, FYI, at all, the minute I do that, check this out. Even though I have one more carbon to place, what did I already just make my chain? How many? I already made my chain five, did I not? The minute you make your chain back to a number, this is, this is the best advice I can give you. The minute you give your chain back to the number that you already left from, you probably have repeated something. So you have to keep trying to maintain your chain. So the, long, the shorter the chain gets, you cannot have very long branches. So the only thing I can do, I believe, I, I'm, I'm out of my realm here, space here, but. So the only one I believe I can do. So what's the name of that? Two, two, three, trimethyl butane. And that, I believe, is the last one. Because you can't move it over here and then go, oh, wait, I have a two, three, three trimethyl. It's the same name. So it's a two, two, three, trimethyl butane. I know we're at time. Give me two more minutes. We're going to just, I want to show you what I'm expecting out of reactions. We'll do more review tomorrow. So that was eight. There are eight isomers. There's an extra bond tomorrow we're going to do with an extra bond. Or if you have like a, like a halogen, that gets tricky because you can move the halogen all around because a halogen can be on the first in the end because halogens don't add to the chain. So those are, those are nasty. Okay, last two things, quick. Below, show a possible reaction where a dehydrogenation occurs with a five-carbon hydrocarbon. Carbon. So you do whatever you want with it, really. I really open-ended it. A possible reaction for a dehydrogenation. So you can do a lot of things, but here's one idea, one, two, three, four, five. A dehydrogenation means that you lose H's, right? So what you could do, I don't really care where it is, you could have had that. You could have had that. I mean, why did you put the bond there? I don't know. I, I had a possible reaction. I'm just showing something. What I'm trying to see, are you understanding? Are you going to add this? Right? I went from a double to a triple. Don't get fancy. Oh, I'll do a double here, and then I'll make another double somewhere else. Like, that's, that's right. But all I'm trying to see is that you went from a certain amount of saturation to less. You're taking out H, dehydrogenation. You're taking it out, OK? So do, can you, can you figure that out? Here we go. Show two possible reactions where fluorine gas reacts with hydrogen, a five carbon hydrogen. Okay. So, what can I do? Anybody remember any names that we could do? Because I that's not maybe all right yet. This one, usually people got half of this right. I wanted to see if people figured out. Anybody? take an H, good, you can take an H out. So you can do this. And you put that anywhere you want. And it becomes an acid. That's called the substitution. The other word, another word is called halogenation. So hydrogenation, if you're adding H's, what do you need to start with? Hydrogenation, if you're adding H's, you need to have what? So then at the other side, whoops. Sorry. This is where you have to be exact. It has to be there and there, correct? Because it has to go where that bond is, right? It has to go where the bond, the bond opens up, so the Fs would go there. So those are two examples. 
You can make them anywhere, but why'd you put them in the middle? I, I don't know. I just did it. So, um, I hope that helps. I, I imagine when I printed it out, I think a lot of you were going to be excited to see the examples that I have. Uh, we'll practice this more tomorrow. Good night.